on the last video we talked a bit about the actual neurons and also about memory resting potential and the action potential. We only briefly touched on it, I want to cover it more in this video because this is the actual point that does talk about the threshold and about the action potential. But remember there's different parts to the, the dendrites and neurons that we need to know. First of all there's the axon terminal. From Axon terminal is where the neurotransmitters are released and there are the dendrites. This is where the neurotransmitters will actually go to. We obviously have the axon body, we also have the myelon, uh, sorry the axon, this is the axon. We have the neural, neuron body, which is this part, and then we have these myelin sheets. Myelin sheets. And then we have another exon terminal from the purple neurons. This is the exon terminal. This is just the labeling part. Also important to realize we talked about membrane resting potential. Remember, that was the difference between charge of the extracellular compared to intracellular. Extra is the outside, so that would be here, the outside of the cell, and intracellular would be the inside of the cell. So we have to figure out what charge difference is there from outside than inside. And we said that for example the outside has negative chlorine and positive sodium. So these negative are the negative chlorine and the positive red ones are the positive sodium. And in the inside we have a bit more negative than in the outside because we have negative phosphates which are for example your phospholipids which are in the membrane itself and negative proteins as well, so negatively charged proteins. And we also have positively charged potassium. So we have some potassium which is positively charged in the inside, but we have quite a bit of negative charge in protein and phosphate form. And the other side we have positive sodium but negative chlorine. So there is a balance, but the whole point is is a bit more negative inside than outside, which is why we say the membrane rest potential is roughly minus 70 millivolts. So what that means is when we talk about volts, we're just talking about the difference between charge. So that means if we are comparing the charge here from the inside and the outside, there is slightly more negative charge, and that negative charge is a difference of minus 70 millivolts of negative charge. All right, so that's important because we're going to talk about it as the actual way that the um, action potential works, and we also need to talk about a threshold and what that is. So Dopin says define, which means we need to define. So we need to talk about what the definition of threshold is and to define the term threshold and explain why not all stimuli generate an action potential. Right, so there's also another thing that's important. We have these different channels here. We've got sodium gates and we've got chlorine gates. Sodium gates allow sodium to either enter or leave. Actually, in the case of sodium gates, it's mostly most of what happens when they're open, these sodium gates, is that sodium will enter the actual um, neuron. So we go from the extracellular into the intracellular. But in most cases, they're closed. And remember, they're, they're actually voltage sensitive. So if the voltage changes, these gates will open. But unless the voltage doesn't change, it's going to be closed. So at 70 millivolts, the sodium gates are going to be closed. And they will open up at 55, minus 55 millivolts. That's when they will actually open up. So in terms of the actual chlorine gates, we also have these chlorine gates, which allow chlorine to enter or to leave. In most cases, um, it's quite balanced. Some will squeeze out, but overall, most will still come in. So overall, it's going to be most of the potassium in our body is going to be inside cells. So it's going to be intracellular. It's going to, there's still going to be some potassium outside. I've not drawn any potassium outside or any sodium inside. Do remember, there will actually be a bit of potassium outside the cell and a bit of sodium inside the cell. But I haven't drawn it for simplifications. But the idea would be that these chlorine gates um, would make sure that basically you have a vast majority of sodium, uh, sorry, these potassium gates, the blue gates, would make sure that the most majority of potassium would be inside the cell during membrane resting potential. So when the membrane is resting, most of the potassium would be inside the cell. Right, so how does this all work? So we've got in the axon terminal, we've got an electrical impulse being sent down. This electrical impulse will basically release, eventually release some, some calcium. This calcium will then flush down towards the axon terminal. That will change the shape of these actual axons and that changing of the shape will cause the release of the neurotransmitters. So these gray dots are meant to be the neurotransmitters. These gray dots will then combine and they will connect with the actual Oops, that's crazy. Um, these gray dots will then go on to the dendrite of the other neuron. And what they will do is they will stimulate a release. So they will release positive charge. 
So they hook onto receptors of the dendrites. Once they've hooked on, they tell the dendrite to release positively charged um, particles. And these particles will then flood towards past the head, so down the dendrites, past the head, and flood towards the actual axon. Right? So we said earlier beforehand, resting potential, when there's no stimulus at all, then we have a resting potential of minus 70 millivolts. Because now we have a flood of positive charge. Remember what millivolts was, was the comparison between the inside and outside. Because now we have more positive than there was beforehand, what's, what's going to happen is this positive charge will actually change the resting potential or will change the, the inside and make it slightly more positive. And what we mean by slightly more positive is it will remove a bit of that negative. So it will actually go down to about minus 55 millivolts. And that's important because that's the threshold. The threshold is the level where these sodium gates are going to be opened. right? So because of this rushing of positively charged particles, that's lower the resting potential of the membranes. It's going to cause an action potential. So once it drops down to 55, it's going to be an action potential. If it drops down to only minus, let's say minus 60, it's not going to be an action potential. It has to drop down to about minus 55 to cause an action potential. And the reason why is because these sodium gates are only sensitive at about minus 55 millivolts. Right. So once these this actual stimuli comes towards these gates, what's going to happen now is these red, which are meant to be the sodium, are going to start flooding in. Right? Because there's more red on the outside than the inside, they actually do want to go in. Right? Fusion kind of tells them they want to go in. And also because there's more negative charge, they're attracted to the negative charge, so that they want to go in. But the problem is they haven't been able to go in because the gates are closed. But now at minus 55 volts, what's going to happen is these gates are going to open. So now the gates are open, the red gate will be open, and that will allow these sodium to come in. But the problem now is we're going to have a huge drop in, it's not a problem, it's actually good because that's what we want it to happen, but there's going to be a huge uh, drop in the actual membrane potential. Beforehand we call it polarized. The reason why we call it polarized is because it's charged, right? So there's a charge, in this case negative charge, but actually it's going to, at one point, the, the potential is going to drop so far below, it's actually going to drop below zero. So at one point it's going to be zero millivolts. That's when we, what we call depolarized because now there's no more charge. Right? So we're going to depolarize the whole potential, but we're actually going to drop down to even further. It's going to go down to plus about, often about plus 50 millivolts. So we went from polarized, negative polarized, then we depolarized it. And now we've brought it actually to positive. And the reason why I went to positive is just because all these sodium particles have come in. Right? So all these sodium particles have come in and that makes it inside much more positive now than the outside. You can see there's, a, there's no more positive, there's very few positive left. Most of them have come inside. So that means now it's more positive on the inside than outside. That's why we have a positive charge. But remember positive and positive repel. So what's going to happen now is some of these positive ones are going to be moving away because they're going to want to get space between the positive particles. Now they're not going to move towards the left because there's positive particles all over the left. They're going to move to a place where there's less positive particles, so they can move to the right instead. So some will move to the right, and once they move to the right, that means so here we have now we had plus 50 millivolts, but on the other side, so this side, there was still minus 70 millivolts, so it's only it's only at one specific point. But as soon as these positive charges flood over, and this part will be, again, more positively charged, so then that will also drop to, let's say, minus 55, and that will start the whole cycle again. So once that drops to minus 55, you've got the same thing happening. You've got these particles coming in, and when they come in, you have this dropping to even lower, to plus 50, and that means it's so positive in there that some of these particles will feel the need to move, to get away from the other positive ones. They will move down and they will stimulate the opening of the next sodium gates. So what you basically have is you have a jumping of the actual impulse from one to the next. And it's going to go all the way down until it gets to the end at the axon terminal. That's where this change in uh, potential would actually cause, so again, this is where the calcium gates would be. The calcium gates would open because of this change. The calcium, gate, the calcium then goes down, change the shape of the axon terminal, and that means we've got these neurotransmitters being flooded over to the other side, to so next dendrite, so this would be a new neuron, and the whole cycle will start again. Right? So in this case, define the term threshold, 
the threshold is just the point where the solemn gates open. In the case of most solemn gates, about minus 55 millivolts. And that's important because if, for example, we drop it down, but we don't drop it down to, let's say, minus 55, we only drop it down to minus 60 millivolts. That's not at the threshold. Nothing will happen. So it's an all or, all or nothing kind of response, all or nothing. It doesn't mean that if we go to minus 60, a bit will happen. If we go to minus 55, that's when everything starts. That's when this chain reaction starts. Beforehand, nothing happens, right? And the one thing I haven't talked about yet is the chlorine gates. They're also sensitive that they are positively charged. Their sensitivity, their voltage sensitivity is positive. So once actually this whole thing here happens, once the, the area becomes plus 50 millivolts positive charge, what's actually going to happen is you're going to have your chlorine coming, leaving again. So the chlorine, the blue ones will have left and they'll go over to the other side. Just to try to equalize the whole thing. We'll talk about that more in the next video, right? But the idea is that these negative the sodium particles come in and the chlorine particles will then leave eventually after it's, it's already activated the next gate. So after the next gate is activated, you're going to have some of these chlorine particles going out again. And then there's going to be a sodium potassium pump, which will equalize it all again, but we'll cover that in the next video. But the main idea I want to get out of this is just the fact that the threshold is just this point where the membrane potential changes to a level where it opens the sodium gates, which is usually about minus 55 millivolts. And once it's opened, we have a rush of sodium inside, which will change it, make it even more positive, right? And that will then cause the next gate to open, and the next gate to open, and the next gate. And so it's a chain reaction. And then it will eventually go all the way to the exon terminals, which will release some calcium. And then the calcium will be released, and that will activate the neurotransmitters to go and jump to the next neuron. And then that's how we have the electrical part, which is the whole, this part uh, is called the electrical uh, impulse and then the jumping part of the chemicals over its next side is the chemical impulse. That's why they call it electrochemical um, messengers. And then we have, we need to explain why not all stimuli generate an extra potential. And again, remember, if it doesn't go down to minus 55 millivolts, as an example, if it just goes down to minus 60, nothing happens. It has to actually activate the sodium gates for there to be an actual potential. Action potential just is basically the opposite of resting potential. Resting means nothing happens. Action potential is just this whole idea of it jumping and then activating all these different gates. But we're going to talk about a bit more about the chlorine gates and how it all gets back to normal in the next video. But I hope that was useful.